Hello everyone, welcome to another PS Does Book Reviews. This is video number 16 and I'm gonna tell you about the books that I've been reading on the last couple of months. It's been a while since I did this uh, video series, so I have a lot of books. Let's get started right away. So what have I been reading? First up, I've been finishing up The Fatals. This is number four. It's the story of where she loses her memory and has to rediscover her powers all over again. Very good stuff. Uh, I love the Fatal series. This is the Portuguese version with a hardcover. There's also in English. Uh, they're pretty good. I gave it a 4 out of 5. So, good stuff. I highly recommend it. I would say more about the story, but then I would be uh, giving spoilers. And we want to avoid that, don't we? I also finished up number 5, which is the Demon's Curse kind of thing, if you translate it from English. Uh, it's the final uh, edition. I think there's only a total of five. This is where she curses the actual uh, demon, uh, according to the text. Uh, so, so yeah, it's very good. No one has spoiled the, the story itself, but I highly recommend it as well. Um, it's a great series, great finale for the series. I really love what uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips did with the with the whole uh, Fatal, and yeah, I highly recommend it. I don't know what else I can say besides that I recommend you checking it out. Next up, I give it a 5 out of 5 stars so for the finale. Next up, I checked out The Mirror of Love by Alan Moore and Jose Villarubia, and it's actually, it's, it's, it's a bit strange. So uh, if you're anti-gay or whatever, you won't like it because this is the compendium of all uh, LBTG uh, books that were ever written. So it doesn't include them all, but it makes references to them all. So it's like a listing of all the best uh, stuff that talked about LGBT and uh, especially about love and uh, loving people from your own gender and uh, gender identity issues and stuff like that. Very, very good, uh, well written, also has some, uh, some images in it, photographs and stuff. It was originally written for a play, and then it was adapted into a book, from what I believe. Very good stuff. I love Ellen Moore, uh, so a lot of pictures in it, so really good. And all the texts are all quite small, so it's all like uh, almost poetry um, or prose kind of thing. And then you have pictures of reference, and in between the texts, it makes reference to the old literature and the old classics uh, that were by gay people or by gender and that kind of stuff. So very cool stuff, very good read, highly recommend it. I gave it, a, I don't know how much I gave it, let me look it up. I gave it a 4 out of 5, so worth checking out. Next up, I read this one, I Am a Hero by what's the author name Kingo Hanazawa so uh, yeah uh, Japanese manga see the style usual uh, Japanese manga kind of thing uh, the main story about this is that well it's a zombie outbreak book but it doesn't tell you the story as um, they were thrown into the zombie outbreak it's more the story of this guy who has some visions, so he's a bit, uh, I don't know if it's called psychotic, I don't know the right word for it, but he sees things, he hallucinates things, and he's also a manga writer, and so that makes the beginning very interesting, and as the story develops, the zombie outbreak starts to appear, and the guy that has visions starts wondering if, hmm, is this really a zombie outbreak, or am I just imagining things? And he goes on with his life, not really understanding what the hell is going on. Uh, until he finally understands that there is really a zombie outbreak uh, coming out. And he has to step up, step up and be the hero. And therefore the title, I am a hero. Um, very funny, very interesting, uh, very Japanese. A lot of uh, silly uh, Japanese jokes about uh, sex and workaholism and uh, strange relationships and stuff like that. Uh, this is also a manga writer in the book. He also shows a bit of how mangas are drawn and how the studios work. So that's also a little bit interesting. 
especially if you like manga, of course. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. I liked it. I want to check out the next volumes. I give it a four out of five. So go check it out, especially if you like zombie stuff or manga stuff, or if you like both, this is the perfect combination. Next, I picked up this thing, Terrarium by Jean Barreiros and Luis Philippe Silva. It was recently released, 20 years re-release version, and uh, they did some rewrites. It's a very thick book, uh, small print line. It took me quite a while to read this, I think. Uh, I started, I'm checking my Goodreads notes here, I started on August the 15th and I ended on July the 19th. So yeah, two months to read this. I only read it on public transportations or when I'm bored, so uh, it took a while. But I managed to finish it up. Um, there's a lot of things I could say about this. I wrote a review on Goodreads. I'm a bit, I'm a bit uh, ambivalent or, or uh, with opposite opinions about it. And I guess I'll have to lay it down for you guys. Uh, so first, it's very cool that it's uh, Portuguese. I don't know if there's actually an English translation. It's good that there's Portuguese uh, science fiction. Uh, the world is very interesting. Um, some characters and some races are well thought out and uh, really work. Um, the whole world itself is well composed. Uh, the writing itself is sometimes good, sometimes too convoluted. Um, sometimes you really want to skip some of the descriptions, uh, it tries to be, it, it tries too hard to be funny, let's call it that. Um, sometimes it works, the situations are ludicrous, you end up having a laugh and then there's a whole uh, description as if you were seeing something uh, common, but in the eyes of technolog technologically advanced. So it's really cool for you to be imagining this whole uh, science fiction world, which is what it's meant to be. So um, in that aspect, I liked it. On the other hand, I kind of didn't like it, especially when they start on the dialogues. The dialogues are very accessible, very common spoken. Uh, so it's not how people would really talk. Uh, he, they tried to include some references to like the characters of the, of the, um, of the characters. Um, like, for example, there's a wolf being and they are always like ready to attack and ready to eat your throat and stuff like that. So that shines out on, on uh, when the paragraph is about the thought process of that being or uh, uh, when they are speaking. But when you really think about it, that's not how they would actually speak or communicate. So it's more, well, it's science fiction. Uh, so yeah, if you get into it it's good uh if you find it off-putting it becomes bad uh so i was a bit back and forth sometimes i really liked it sometimes i really didn't uh, what i really liked was the whole world about it i think it was very cleverly done uh the negative points that i didn't like about it was for example the artificial intelligence will never speak common language to a person um so when they have some artificial intelligence uh characters in the book so those were really off-putting for me at least um, uh, other things that were off-putting about the book was way too many characters. Uh, I realized that it this was made in parts, so it's like, they call it the mosaic, mo mo mosaic, mosaic, I don't know how the hell you say it in English. Uh, so it's like, uh, small parts of a world and then you put them all together, you are reading about different parts of the same world, so you get a better idea of the whole world. Um, I like that concept, but it doesn't really work well on a thick book. On a thick book, you expect a linear story kind of thing, not collection of stories. At least that's that's how I envision it. Uh, of course, uh, I'm not uh, pro in science fiction. Uh, I just read it, you know. Uh, so I don't know that much. Uh, all the references that they have here. Um, and this is another problem that they have. They also include a lot of references of things just to have references of things. Like they include, I don't know, references to Pinocchio because they can. And uh, they think that, uh, well, I assume that that's why they do it, that they do it so that people identify with that and have a laugh out of it. And at the same point, they have uh, already existing references so people can imagine it better. I don't know why, but then it, it ends up being too far-fetched uh, when you see a lot of known characters or known names or stuff like that thrown in together just for the hell of it, it becomes a bit 
uh, okay. There's this whole obsession with uh, 80s, part, uh, 80s um, geek culture, let's call it that, science fiction geek culture, so there are a lot of relics that are books of, of those ancient times. Uh, for them, it's ancient times, for us it's uh, relatively modern, so yeah, I know, I realized they really love science fiction and they wanted to make like an homage to those kind of things, but it didn't really work in the book, it was like kind of forced. So, I don't know. Anyways, after spending two months reading it, I decided that the drawbacks were a bit too much, so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5. It's still an interesting read, I really enjoyed discovering the world in it, the races are very interesting. I love in particular one that is about, let me find out the name of the guy, the Volpex. The Volpex was really interesting, the Volpex arc was very cool. I really love discovering that. It's a whole mini story in itself and it really works very well. So, yeah, they have a lot of mini stories that could have been thrown out, but since this is since this is a mosaic book, it makes sense to still include them. So, that's that. Anyways, next. More books that I read. I read Monstrous. Awesome book. Totally recommended by Marjorie Liu and Sara Takeda. These girls know what the hell they're doing. The story is awesome, the drawings are phenomenal, it's fucking great. I loved it to hell, very good. I need to get my hands on the second volume as soon as possible. Very, very good. Um, I only read it because, well, the artwork is great and it had a foreword by Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman says, remarkable, beautiful, beautifully told story of magic and fear. And, well, I like everything Neil Gaiman, and I trust Neil Gaiman's uh, sense of quality. The artwork looked awesome, so I checked it out, and it didn't disappoint. Really, really good. Great storyline. Well, it's about this girl, and she has some sort of demon inside her. And she starts off as a slave, and she is traveling around to achieve a certain purpose of revenge. Of revenge of some sort. Um, well, and there are a whole lot of adventures around it. She finds some partners in her journey and stuff like that. Really, really good. I'm really looking forward to number two and the other ones if they are out. So, yeah, I give it a... how much did I give it? Five out of five. So, yeah, that's how good I liked it. Then I had a couple of books that Christina wanted to get rid of, so I decided, yeah, I should probably read that before you throw them away. So, um, well, not throw them away, but give them away. One of them was Berserk by Michael Grant. She said she didn't really like this because it had everything to be good, but then at the end uh, it didn't work because the nanotechnology was too far-fetched. She works in the field, so she understands a bit nanotech. She understands nanotechnology a bit better than I do. Uh, for me, it was very interesting. I really liked the concept. It's an action thriller kind of thing. Your main characters are YA, so that's why it's described as YA. I finally understood what the hell YA means as a genre. It means that the main protagonist is a young adult. That's all it means. It doesn't mean anything else. You can still have sex and uh, gore and whatever. Just the main character is a young adult. That's all it means. So, uh, yeah, that's what happens in Berserk right now. There are a lot of gore scenes, there are a lot of action scenes, uh, there's nanotechnology thrown into the mix, so it creates this whole world that can be considered dystopian of some sort. It's quite interesting, I liked it. The only bad part about this is that it hangs, in, it ends in a cliffhanger, so now I have to read book two and number three. I fucking hate that. If you're writing a book, do a proper ending to it, and then if you want to write a sequel, write a sequel, don't leave it hanging. What the fuck? That's, that's, you don't do that. So for that, I'm not going to buy the next books. I'm going to try to find them on the library and just get them over with. Christina still wants to get rid of this book. Uh, so it's going to find a better owner than us, who clearly don't care that much about nanotechnology and don't quite respect the author as it seems that we probably should. So sorry about that, Michael Grant. I really like the story, though. It was nice. I give it a 4 out of 5. So, sorry. Um, last but not least, what I've been reading as well is a novel by Mark Aiden called The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Mid in the Nighttime. The dog is upside down because it's dead. Yep, that's right. It's the story about a dead dog found in the nighttime. 
and it's told by the vision or the sight of an autistic child. It's a very interesting read. Uh, the author understands autist uh, kids a little bit because he worked with them, uh, says so in the beginning text. So uh, that's why he decided to write the story about wh wh which, where the main character is. And the story is written as in the autistic kid is trying to write a book about the detective work that he's doing, uh, trying to discover who killed this dog. Apparently, the social worker at the school encourages him to write a book about it. Um, so he goes for it. And there's a whole adventure of how he deals with, uh, with the dog, interviewing people, uh, dealing with his family, who don't really encourage his detective work for several reasons. And there's a whole drama plot around it. I'm not going to get into it to avoid spoilers. But it's really good. I really love the writing. I think it was nominated for a um, Man Booker Prize or whatever it's called. Uh, let me see if it's written here somewhere. Uh, no, I don't see anything. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a New York Times notable book. White Bread Book of the Year. Okay. I highly recommend it. Really good, really liked it. I love how he starts putting uh, logical and mathematical stuff in the middle of it to explain the point of view of the autistic kid. You really understand what the kid is reasoning, why he's reasoning like that, and you start wondering why the other people are too stupid to understand what makes perfect sense for the kid. Um, Although dealing with autistic people is really hard, uh, it's hard for us non-autistic people to understand what they're actually trying to say. That's the biggest problem, it's communication, because uh, we think things differently. We think more logically and we think more emotionally. That's the main point that should be across. This book really puts it out there, so if people read this book, they will understand that better. So I think this is an important book also for that reason. Um, and that's it. That's all the books I've been reading on the last few months. Um, books I'm going to pick up next. It's one. It's this one called Suicide Girls in the Afterlife by Gina Ranali. Because Christina also wants to get rid of it. She said she read it and it's eh. So uh, she wants to clear up some shelf space. And I decided to take a look at it before it goes. Since it's rather small, should be able to read it. I actually wanted to read it today before this video. But, you know, didn't have time yet. Uh, next up, I have this one, which is Joe Nesbo's The Red Breast. I want to keep reading more Joe Nesbo. Joe Nesbo is great. I already read two books of him. Uh, both of them were awesome, so I want to read this one. It's also going to be part of the September Thrills um, hashtag uh, competition kind of thing that Christina and Dora are uh, running. They are going to give two books away to people who do some photos uh, of uh, books with, uh, with uh, cover names. I'm not going to do a photo about red breasts, although I guess I could if I had red paint. I could paint my breast and that would be red. But I don't really think I should participate in the photos. I think I will participate reading though, because the whole point of September Thrills is to read a thriller that you have around on your bookshelf during September. Or one or more. Oh, the more books you manage to clear out from your shelves, the better. Books are meant to be read, not to be catching dust. So if you want to check out September Thrills thing, you can go check out at uh, the link that will be here somewhere underneath. I will put the link to uh, Christina's um, video where she explains the whole hashtag September Thrills. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of the books. If you have read any of them, if you haven't read any of them, if you love Joe Nesbo, if you hate Joe Nesbo, uh, anything like that, just let me know. You know, put some comments below. I have so little comments. Please contribute. I ask you. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that jazz. See you next time. Take care.